Hey there, so in this video I want to talk to you guys about matching coloring styles with the style of your line art. This is something that's been asked a lot and I thought I would talk about it with you guys today, so check it out. All right, welcome everyone. My name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist and the instructor at O1ArtSchool.com. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, so like I said in the intro, in the video today I want to talk about matching coloring styles to line art. And I'm going to disclaimer this up front and say that I'm going to give you my opinion on the subject, okay? And for almost every example I give you, you can probably find an example of the opposite also working. So I don't want you to look at this video as like this is the guideline. This is the rule. There are no rules when it comes to this. And there are coloring styles that I wouldn't have guessed would work over certain types of line art that does. And so I'm going to give you my two cents. There are some things that seem to be consistent, I'll say, on, on certain types of art and what works and what doesn't. So we can talk about a good bit of that stuff. All right. So I, what I did is I've, I've pulled some examples of... Uh, some of my favorite colorists, some of their work, and I did, I think, throw one of mine in here as well, but uh, first one I selected here is, uh, this is Dave Stewart coloring uh, Sean Gordon Murphy on, um, what is this? I don't remember what this is. Uh, American Vampire, I think? And I chose this one because, to me, it's a good example of line art that's uh, very detailed and there's a lot of contrast in the line art itself. And what I mean by that is like Sean uses a lot of uh, black in his work to draw attention to certain areas and, you know, create contrast in areas and make areas recede into the background. And, and so he's doing a lot of the legwork uh, that, you know, most good artists do when, when they're drawing a page and leading the eye around and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, uh, Dave, uh, who is the colorist on this, has kept the colors very simple, I think, for that reason. You know, he's not having to go crazy rendering a whole bunch of detail uh, to try to get a page to look complete or look finished because the the line work itself is so detailed and there's, there's, uh, there's lots of contrast and shadows and, and line work and hatching and all these little things that's going on that, uh, you know, he's just adding enough color to make it work, you know, to make it work as, as a full page without having to add a lot of extraneous, you know, detail. You know, if if Dave had uh, come in here and let's see, I'm just going to pick like a shadowy color. And like if he had gone in here and started just, sorry if you guys heard that. I think you did. <laughs> but if he had like really gone crazy rendering just every little, you know, minute detail on this guy and just a whole bunch of rendering, it just, it would look messy because the line art itself already has a lot of detail in it and already has a lot of the, uh, the work that, uh, that a lot of other artists honestly will kind of leave to the colorist to add in. And so he's letting this line art breathe. You know, I think that's the term I've heard thrown around. You know, there's really not a lot of rendering here. There's, you know, some blotchy stuff in the sky in the background and, uh, you know, a few blotches of color on the faces, you know, around the red area, noses and eyes, eyes, noses and eyes. <laughs> I'm, le I'm leaving this in there. Um, eyes and noses. Yes, uh, is what I was trying to say. And uh, I, I pulled another example from this same book. You know, the color is, it's very subtle. You know, and this is such a cool, cool piece because, you know, this uh, orangey red hair this guy has, it's really not super saturated. You know, I mean, the fire over here in the boiler is, but it, it just takes a little bit of warmth, you know, on a page like this that's mostly cool and gray for that to immediately stand out. You know, he didn't have to go crazy saturated or crazy bright. It's just everything else is cool, a little bit of warmth, and that's all you need. You know, and and again, like in this panel here, very little detail in the color itself because it, it it doesn't need it. There's a lot of texture here. There's a lot of character, 
you know, there's no need to try to add more on top of this. It would just complicate it and kind of look messy. And so I think this is a good example of a style you can use. Now, I wish we could all work on art as, as good as this. And most of us don't get the chance to. But, but if you do, if you're able to work with an artist that has really solid forms in, in the lines themselves, you know, don't fight it, you know back off and, you know, put it to the color where it matters and, and just be Dave Stewart. That's, that's all you have to do here. Let's see. And, and, and just to show you guys, you know, Dave works in multiple styles. This is a very uh, different kind of coloring or a different kind of art style, different kind of coloring style, because the line art here, especially on the characters, it's much more open. Okay. And what I mean by open is you know, there's not a ton of blacks and shadows and things, especially on the faces. I mean, there are spot blacks on the pages, but uh, other than this guy's ears, you know, I mean, it, there's it's just open line art, and so it's a it, you know the colorist there has a little bit more r room to, to operate. You know, so Dave's added some basic, uh, you know, it's just kind of a anime kind of uh, style, almost like a cell shaded kind of style, at least in the on the characters. Now what's interesting is he's a bit more painterly in the backgrounds, but the characters are always rendered, or almost always rendered in this book, um, very hard edges, you know? But I think this kind of line art, to go back to kind of matching the style here, is the characters look cartoony also. You know, these aren't realistically drawn faces. I mean, not that I mean, this is not, uh, I and mean, this is pretty realistic stuff, you know. This uh, would fit in, in uh, you know, any, in a history book. You know, you could do a book colored like this, but, uh, or drawn like this. But with a book like this, where the line art's simpler and more, kind of has a cartoony feel to it, the colors kind of match. So the colors kind of look like a cartoon. Um, same thing here. This is another page from that same uh, series. You know, if you get close and look at the faces, very simple, just kind of flat, flat lines, and but the in the backgrounds here, a little bit more different color variation in the backgrounds, like in the water and in the backgrounds of the sky. You know, a really brushy background against the contrast of the more simply colored foreground. I think works really well. So it, you know, it just it depends on the art style, of course, you're going for. But with more cartoony line art, you can tend to be more cartoony in the colors. I think. And I found um, some more art from, this is another uh, Sean Gordon Murphy artwork from The Wake. And this was colored by, um, sorry, it was two pages, two pages there. There, there we go. Uh, this was colored by uh, Matt Hollingsworth. And again, it's a different colorist this time, but his approach isn't dramatically different from what Dave was doing as far as the overall feel. I mean, technically, he's, he's doing other things. There's especially if you're getting close, there's a lot of uh, detail in here as far as uh, uh, in the texture. Like if you get really close, you can see he's using like uh, texture in, in, in throughout most of this. But the colors are uh, relatively flat. And what I, I'm not saying they're completely flat. You know, he is doing some rendering here. But again, this could easily be overdone. if Because a lot of beginners, what I see is they just immediately assume that, okay, I need to go crazy rendering all this stuff, and I need to make my mark as a colorist, you know? And so they'll go in, and I don't have the lines for this. And so, boy, they just start adding details and details and details all over the place, and, and more and more and more, and everything is shiny, and, you know, it doesn't need it, <laughs> okay? It doesn't need it, not artwork like this. And I think that's why both colorists in these cases kept things pretty simple, because the line art is, is carrying so much weight. Uh, there's another page here, just an example of this. Same scene, uh, just a, 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 a different page. Again, relatively flat colors, and he's very strong in his color choices. Obviously, like the, the palette works really well together. Uh, but as far as like rendering styles go, uh, pretty simple uh, overall, I believe. Now, uh, this is, I would say, like a more uh, traditional type of like comic book coloring. Like it's more like cut and grad style coloring and it's because the line art is kind of the same way it's it's very clean uh, it's it's also has sort of a cartoony element to it 
Uh, it's not super realistic. And this style of coloring works on this style of line art really well. Now, that's not to say that you couldn't be more painterly with this. It might work, you know, but for me, I, I, I always try to match the coloring style in, in a similar way to however the line art is. So if the line art's very clean and very sharp like this is, and uh, Nathan, the colorist on this, is, is pretty much doing the same thing. He's keeping the colors very clear. It's not a lot of heavy uh, experimental things or blotchy, painty stuff. Like, it's all pretty clean, kind of, you know, lasso and brush kind of coloring stuff. So, yeah, it's a really well-colored book. Uh, that's uh, Invincible. And, and then I just started looking around the internet for some other examples of work we could talk about. Um, this one is kind of... Uh, and I don't know who this is. I apologize for not looking this up ahead of time. But you know, this is a bit more uh, painty, I guess, as as coloring goes. There's uh, there's not a lot of digital. It's it's definitely it's digital coloring, but it's not obviously digital, you know. But if you look at the line art, the line art itself also has a very kind of organic feel to it, you know. It it's definitely it's not as clean as as something like this would be. It's a little more rough around the edges, and I think the coloring, you know, kind of matches that. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm shooting for. When I, whenever I'm trying to decide on so what's going to work is what complements the work, not let me make sure that people notice me as the colorist, you know. Now, this is an example of one of mine. Um, this work was, if you look at the inks, there was some ink washes in this, and so I, I wanted to work, you know, with that and, and not against that, so... The colors themselves, if you if you look at the color layer by itself, is also very kind of brushy, you know, and, and I kind of try to keep the same feel. Prior to doing this book, almost all uh, line art and comics that I had seen that had washes, a lot of times I noticed that it was colored this way, where the colors were also very smooth and not super digital looking, uh, even though they are digital most of the time. And... To give you guys kind of the the counterpoint to that is what Dave McCaig did on uh, Huck, which if you guys haven't read that book, uh, it's, it's amazing. He was working with um, uh, Raphael Albuquerque, who was doing the line art on this, and the line art uh, is has a lot of washes and has a lot of you know brushy stuff in it, and. Dave, instead of doing a very brushy, you know. Uh, uh, you know, watercolory coloring style went with like a more traditional kind of cut and grad kind of style with these hard edges and hard lines and it works, you know, so this is one of those, it works really well. It's one of those kind of exceptions uh, to what we talked about earlier. And, and that's what I mean when I say that the reason why I, I've, I haven't done this video over the last four years or however long this channel has been is I just don't, the reason is there's not a single solution for every single scenario. It's like Dave did something with this book that I wouldn't have guessed to try to do, you know, but he's also been doing this for a lot longer than I have and is much more experienced at it and, he's mu and much better at it than I am. So, you know, don't get too caught up in, oh, I have to fit this exactly because this work is always colored like this. You know, sure, there there are, like I said early in the video, there are guidelines, things that might uh, help to improve it or give you a better chance to find a style that matches the colors well. But you know, here's a great example of kind of going against that, you know, and doing something else that works, you know. And uh, so, so keep that in mind when you're working. And if you guys have, you know, specific line art that you've got questions about, you know, throw them in the comments and, and I'll be happy to give you my two cents or about anything else on the channel here. So I usually try to answer all of the constructive comments that are uh, on, the, on the channel here. So, so anyway, uh, it's been a short video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something here. And uh, if you did, be sure to check the links in the description. Uh, give me a thumbs up on the video, subscribe, all that, you know, hit the bell thing. You, you guys know, I know how this works now, right? So uh, but thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.